I want to welcome everybody to Highline United Methodist Church Zoom time. We be Zooming today because we can't get together physically, but we can still socialize. It don't matter if we're in if we're socializing in our bodies or not. We just send in love to everybody today. We're going to be singing some songs today, and Pastor Jenny's going to give us a word of encouragement. We're going to have a good time. And I hope you all have a good time with us, whatever you're doing. And know that we love you. So here we go. We're going to sing, I'm so glad that Jesus lifted me. And it's in your black book, The Faith We Sing, on page 2151. So here we go. Lord, I lift your name on high. I lift your name on high. That's right. 2088. You know how it gets. All these numbers we have to put up with. But we're more than the number to Jesus, people. We are valued and we are lifted by Jesus. So this is called, Lord, I lift your name on high. <laughs> Lord, I 
prayer, excuse me, um, is this. Please pray with me. God of life and resurrection, we believe in you, but sometimes we doubt. When we doubt, you weep. You call us out to show your truth to those who don't believe. Comfort our weary souls that we may be an example. Though we despair in dark times, your resurrection gives us hope that one day all will be well. Amen. Amen. And now let us sing Trust and Obey. That's right. We're going to get to that, that, that song. That's on page 467 in your hymnal. Let me get my hymnal. You know, being at home, I put things on the floor. But it's nice to have a home. So blessed to have a house to be in. Amen. And Jesus is in the house today. So here we go, when we trust and obey. <laughs> Oh, 
reading today is from John 11 verses 1 through 45. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and his sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill, so the sisters sent a message to Jesus, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, this illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then, after this, he said to the disciples, Let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you, and are you going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble, because they see the light of this world. But those who walk at night stumble, because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but then thought that he was referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake, I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. 
Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found Lazarus had been already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him, while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, see how he loved him? But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind men have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, great, again, greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there's a stench because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone and Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I know that you all always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The man, dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to him, unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I don't know about you, but as we continue to be sheltered in place um, and restrictions continue to grow, some of this gets harder to take. Uh, I, I've noticed the emotions are a little more raw with people. There's a lot more going on. There's a lot more anxiety in the world. Um, people are just in a place of unknowing and uncertainty. There's so much different kinds of news coming from different places. Um, it's just getting to be a harder time. And it's times like these that I I'm so thankful that we have these scriptures. I cannot say enough how much going through these scriptures in the book, the Gospel of John, have um, really touched me personally and reminded me of who Jesus is. When we're talking about these I am sayings, today Jesus tells them, I am the resurrection and the life. Life. Jesus is life. 
And so here's this family who is distraught over the death of their brother. And the whole village has gathered with them. The village is there at their house, grieving with them. They're in great mourning. And um, we are alone, physically alone. So how do we mourn with each other, care for each other, help each other in this time when we can't physically be together. That is our challenge. We're not good at that as a society, as a culture. The different cultures within our American culture are um, very different. There are different people who react differently, work with each other differently. Um, they're just certain cultures that are more communal in how they live together. And in this time when we're not allowed to have funerals, we're not allowed to have weddings, that has been very difficult for some of my friends and neighbors. And so this scripture tells us Jesus is the life. Lazarus Here's Jesus. He's dead, and yet he hears Jesus' voice. He hears the shepherd's voice, and he obeys it, and he comes out. That, that's pretty remarkable. That's not something that you just go, oh, yeah, Jesus called him, and he, he came back to life. And some people really are unsure of this as a sign, one of Jesus' signs that he does in the book of John. What does it mean that Lazarus comes back to life? Is that a resurrection? Is that not a resurrection? Because he comes back to his same old body. When Jesus is resurrected, he's different. He can move through doors and walls and appear to people. So is this a resurrection or what is this that happens to Lazarus? And I say it is a resurrection. It might not be the last resurrection. It might not be the same resurrection that will happen when his mortal body dies and is not brought back like Jesus. Um, it might just be one of those small resurrections that we have to keep holding on to. Jesus can resurrect us in this time, here and now, give us life when we feel like everything around us is dying. There are resurrections that happen all the time. Our symbol today um, is a butterfly. And the butterfly has been used as a symbol of resurrection for I don't know how long, but all the time of Christianity that I know of. Because butterflies go through a death and come out different and come alive again. And so the resurrections that we experience in this time in this lifetime aren't necessarily going to be the same as the resurrection that Jesus experiences after his death. That will come after our death. But Jesus is constantly bringing people to life. When the Jews that were with Mary and Martha say, if only he had been here, he, he gave the blind man sight. We talked about that last week. If he could give the blind man sight, surely he could bring this man back. He could have saved him from death. They didn't know that he could actually bring him back to life. And so here we are, ever amazed at what Jesus can do. And 
I'm very distracted at this moment by my dog. <laughs> He's whining. So that's a tough thing about doing worship at home. Uh, this is not how we normally do it. So there's funny things that happen, and um, we just have to roll with that. I'm sorry. I'll see if I can give him a bone and make him happy for a little while. Okay, so back to resurrection. We have to believe that in this time, Jesus is working resurrections right here and now. And once, once Lazarus is back to life, um, if you keep reading the scripture, it's uh, John 11. And then if you continue on into John 12, they're having dinner with Mary and Martha and Lazarus. And in the scripture, it, it says, Lazarus is seated at the table with Jesus. In the original manuscripts, it actually says Lazarus was reclining on Jesus. He's leaning on Jesus at the table. That is life. We lean into Jesus for life. That's where we find this resurrection and this way to live in a time when death surrounds us. So I just encourage you to lean into and onto Jesus as much as you possibly can. And I know that can sound like a very just trite, easy thing for every Christian to say. What does it mean and how do you actually lean on Jesus? That is where it gets difficult because we we have to obey when we hear Jesus voice and actually respond and do something Lazarus could have laid in that tomb but he heard Jesus voice and he responded to the shepherd so here we are how do we respond how do we engage Jesus now It's hard work, and it's something that we practice in good times and bad so that when we're in these times when our nerves are frayed and everything seems to bring us to some level of anxiety, we have those disciplines to fall back on. So prayer, meditation, reading our scripture, Reading and seeing where Jesus is resurrecting people in the midst of this. It's hard to get good news. I was joking with a friend um, last week that I was going to start playing old cassette tapes of Anne Murray's We Need a Little Good News. I don't know if you remember that song. It, but anyway, David does. <laughs> so... Uh, it's hard to find the good news right now, but it's there. Yeah. I know that there are people and churches and different uh, groups that are doing things for people in need right now. Mm -hmm. Our church building is a resurrection site for 20 women who would normally be out on the street um, and are looking for shelter. And so, our building, while we are not there and able to use it, is being used by Catholic Community Services to properly shelter 20 women so that they can stay away from the public, they can stay inside where they're safe, and they're not exposed to this virus going around. That is good news. That is a small resurrection for these women. Our friends at Lake Burien Presbyterian are working with schools and World Vision. They've partnered with them to help. They're volunteering to give out boxes of necessities, food and other um, toiletries and things that people need in their homes to families in need who are suffering from the economics of this uh, shutdown right now. Um, so the people that are healthy and able to volunteer are out there putting boxes in people's trunks when they drive up 
to the school. That's another resurrection. That's how we are lifting each other up as Jesus lifts us up. And it's how we experience Christ with each other. So each of those volunteers goes home. They read their scripture. They pray. And then they sit in silence and just wait on Jesus. Lean into Jesus to speak back to them. And you might not hear an actual voice. I don't believe I've ever actually heard a voice. But what I have experienced in those times is incredible peace and sometimes incredible love that just kind of overwhelms my body. And so when we can just quiet ourselves, stop thinking so much, try to turn off the thoughts in our head. And as you meditate, those thoughts will come and you just say, hi, I'm busy now and let those thoughts go and refocus yourself on Jesus. Now, I talked about this a little bit last week. I hope you've had a chance to try it. Um, I don't know if you've chosen a symbol uh, to use to focus on to help you with that meditation, but if a candle helps you or this week for new life, you might find a picture of a butterfly and use that as your symbol to focus on. So whenever those thoughts in your mind just start going, then you just look at your symbol, focus back on that, and ask Jesus to give you peace or love or whatever it is that you're needing. Use that as just a short saying, Jesus, give me your peace. And you can just repeat that. Look back at your symbol. Refocus yourself. I cannot tell you how important this is right now. It is the thing that will sustain you. And so I, I pray for each of you. And I pray that we can all practice this discipline. Um, it is the thing that gives us peace and takes away the anxiety. So respond to Jesus. Yeah. Jesus is calling you out to be resurrected. Say yes and obey. So we are going to sing with David, uh, Trust and Obey. It's in the hymnal. It's number 467. And I'm going to turn off my mic so we can hear David. We're going to do that again. Or we're going to do I Surrender All. We, we, we did trust and obey. We already did trust and obey. Very good. Thank you, David. Let's do that other one I said we are going to do. I surrender all. That's page 354. And so here we go. And uh, we're, we're, we're you, just surrendering to Jesus. I really got that down. And, and uh, I tell you what, I have so much peace in this time of trials. And I know it works if you work it. So here we go. Oh, to Jesus, I surrender all to Him. I freely give. Will I? Will ever love and trust Him in His presence? Jesus, my blessed Savior. 
Holy Spirit will truly, truly know that thou art mine. For first off, to Jesus will I, I said I surrender, Lord. I give myself to thee, will be with thy love, and love has power, let not sing all you to pray with me. Let us be in silence for a moment. Most gracious God, we come before you this day humbled by our own mortality, our own humanity, we pray that you will call to us and we will hear your voice. Help us to focus on that and let go of the rest of our fears, our worries, the things around us. Help us to remember that Jesus always responded to those in trouble. And so Jesus is responding to us. We know that. And we give thanks to you, O oh God. Give us the ability to focus in this time that we can hear Jesus and stay focused so that we may know your peace, and your love when all around us feels like it's swirling out of control. We lift up to you all the people of our congregation that are not able to be together and who are missing one another and we especially lift up those who are grieving for Samuel. We give thanks that um, others who have been in the hospital are now home and doing well. Continue to Hold us, Lord. Help us to reach out to one another in ways that we're not used to. Help us to 
call when we need it. Help us to call others when we're not in the habit of it. And we lift up to you our healthcare community. Watch over them as they continue to work for all those who are sick. We pray for the researchers and the people trying to understand this virus who are looking for vaccines. We pray for our leaders, for our mayors, our council members, our governors, our legislators, our president, the cabinet, all of the people who are having to make important decisions very quickly and in a time that we were not prepared for. Give us wisdom, give us guidance. Lead us in this time. Let us know that you continue to walk with us. And so we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. And now I believe David has one more song to leave us with. It's the heaven. And that's where we're headed. It's the heaven. So uh, y'all, we're, we're glad you joined us today. And we just love everybody. So here we go. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy and his grace.
Go now in peace, remembering you are a child of the Creator, redeemed by the Christ, and sustained by the Holy Spirit. Go find those mini resurrections where God is calling us. Amen. Go in peace. That was fun.